Hello there, thank you for joining me today. Uh, we're just going to be looking at doing some radio alignments on a CB radio. Uh, this is a Murphy home base that somebody's given me to uh, align for them, adjust. Uh, we'll use the uh, HP 8920 radio test set to do those uh, checks and measurements. Um, today I've got the Synab meter for the uh, signal to noise and distortion for receiver performance testing connected to the audio in and basically we're, we're tagging that across the, the speaker um, some audio outputs you can't do that with uh, with a negative lead because it's a push pull audio amplifier IC that it uses in some designs, not in this one though, it uses a common ground for the negative side of the speaker so you can actually short out some audio outputs by attaching the negative or chassis if you like connection to the negative side of the speaker it was a push pull output on the um you know on the audio amplifier because they, they tend to work at like half supply rails and so by connecting negatively to the negative side of the speaker so on some amps you can damage them but not on this if that's the case just connect the positive to one side of the speaker and that'll uh, that'll be enough and leave a negative floating Okay, so we'll just get into it, uh, just have a look um, what the basic architecture is. Obviously we're dealing with mains voltages for a start off because we've got mains transformer. So we need to be careful, we've got mains supply coming in which is leading to this switch here. Um, fortunately it's wrapped in tape, uh, if not then it's you know potential electric shock hazard. Especially with poking things like screwdrivers and adjusting tools. There's our wrists as well, all sorts of things. So it's always worth noting that uh, you know potentially you could short it out with your body and get an electric shock so that's the main power switch uh, we're on channel 19's frequency at the moment uh, which is 27.78125 megahertz um, so basically looking inside uh, we have the um, reported fault with this is a defective receiver you need a lot of signal in other words to get the receiver to to work so this is a receiver front end uh, as it comes in on the antenna there's a pin diode switch when it's not in transmit the receive signal is diverted this way uh, through these coils and then uh, through into the discriminator chip which is this but it, this also does other functions as well as a receive side uh, this demodulates the, uh, well basically produces an IF and the first IF goes via this crystal filter here, this IF filter and then from there it goes back in for further processing and then this is a reference oscillator crystal which runs the um, um, VCO synthesizer which is all integral within this chip and the discriminator produces a, a demodulated FM output audio signal and we've got some coils which tune that discriminator more precisely before then the audio is left to the AF power amplifier to be amplified to go to the speaker we've got adjustments for squelch and transmit deviation there these potentiometers the transmit side the TX signal leaves uh, this chip um, and goes through numerous amplifications via these coils and transistors uh, before then it, it gets into what is the RF power amplifier section which is these RF power amplifier transistors here and then this is the bandpass filter arrangement that you can see with these coils uh, sometimes you have to spread these coils and adjust them to get um, the right TX output power but also to get rid of harmonics and such like and these RF power transistors amplify the signal up to about 5 watts before it leaves on the antenna socket. Um, so that's a quick rundown. Obviously this board's taken out of a mobile CB radio and then put in a case which makes it a base. They don't do a, a, you know, a special design. We've got a binary coded decimal switch here, which is this thing, which is your channel selector, which then obviously inputs binary data into this chip and selects the appropriate frequency um, and so that's basically a rundown of it really it's internal workings um, the power supply section has got a obviously step down transformer to around about 30 volts I think there's two 
rectifier diodes that are down there. It doesn't use a bridge rectifier, I don't think. Um, no, just uses two diodes to then rectify the AC smoothing cap there for the uh, DC side, and then we use a 23055 transistor NPN as a series pass regulator to supply a fixed output of probably about 13.8 volts then to the radio main board so as I say we've um, set up uh, measurement now on the um, test set um, I'll just adjust the light so that we can see a little bit more what we're doing and uh, I'll just move that light over as well so for inside here so we can have a look okay so what we've got um, we'll just do a transmit measurement first of all on TX let's just see what it's uh, let's see if it transmits so I'm pressing the mic now we've got the Rotel mic we're getting five and a half watts at 27.7815 looks to be fairly on frequency but just to check that is on frequency we will just change this here to manual which means that uh, I've obviously inputted the frequency prior so that will give us the frequency error the transmitter just make sure it's not off frequency as you can see it's nicely on frequency it's only 86 Hertz off frequency um, I'd only adjust that if it was over, above 600 Hertz off frequency because then it could start to wander off into adjacent channels if it's higher than 600 Hertz especially if it's getting up to 1 kilohertz that's a bit uh, you notice receiver degradation and other things will happen when that happens. So, uh, we'll do a transmit mod test as well. We'll wind the volume up and we'll see what the, the speed sounds like. One, two, three, four, five, five, one, two. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, one, two. About two kilohertz deviation on transmit. Um, that might need adjusting because obviously um you don't want it over modding um you're not meant to be having it too wide on modulation because it can spread into adjacent channels but it looks okay to be honest the the manufacturer's spec for that will be to inject uh, a fixed level audio signal out the test set uh, on the af output port it might say it'd be 100 millivolts and that will go into the microphone input jack and then you transmit a one kilohertz tone at whatever level the service manual says it should be at and you would then adjust some of the potentiometers um, on the board down here to um, then get the desired deviation on the on the meter at the front blowing into the microphone is just a rough guide as to what potentially that could be but because the human speech is made of different frequencies obviously um, certain frequencies way over deviate more than others so it can give you a bit of a, an indication, a good indication, but it can, it's not an accurate representation of true FM deviation. But it's good enough for this test. Okay, so we'll go to receive now, and uh, we'll have a look and see what uh, the receive says. So, I'd normally expect this radio to open its squelch around about 0.3 microvolts, something like that. I'll just open the squelch. I can hear something. It's quite a, it's not too bad, microvolts. Yeah, it's not doing too bad, that's point, uh, that's point, uh, microvolts, here we are. That's one mic, yeah. it's a little bit, I'll just have a look at the sign at a moment there, which is, what? Put up one microvolt and then we'll have a look at the distortion. There's 18% at the cyanide. 14 point whatever. Let's just adjust the discriminator, which are these three coils here. I'll just adjust that. So we'll just move that in there. And let's just. Uh, Start with this one and have a look and see what we get on the uh, on the monitor. Let's have a look. See what we can achieve.
Oh, aye, that's better. Oh, yeah. That peak there, look. So look at this one. That's getting worse. We're not far off. Nearly 18 dB. What about that one? Oh, it's gone quiet. Right. This is just the RF level. Right, so we've uh, got around about uh, 19 dB cyanide. We'll just have a look at the distortion. I don't see what distortion is there. Twelve percent distortion at that one microvolt level, which isn't too bad. Six percent distortion. I don't know if we can better that. Certainly try. It's gone all together. I think that just alters the AF uh, gain, so we'll just have a look at the scope for the AF gain and we'll see what it, it shows us as a level. So we'll just adjust that for maximum AF gain. That's going all together. Yeah, see, it just starts to distort there. So I think that's about the best. We're going to get it is about there, I think. Right, we'll have a look at the RF front end now. Um, which are these coils here, all the way along. And what we'll do, we'll go back to receive test on the test set. We'll adjust the... RF level amplitude so it gets noisy and then we'll go to the first coil now sometimes you have to put methyl methylated spirits on these because they've either got a wax compound or or you have to melt the wax in order to turn them um, or there's like a grease oil that's put on the cores on these um, slugs the ferrite slugs and so what happens is trimming tools can crack them so you've got to be very careful you don't crack them never adjust that never try and adjust them if it won't go because you'll break the ferrite core and never use a metallic screwdriver either that's getting worse so we're tuning for less noise and more signal that's getting worse again so we'll just peak it which is about there same with this one. That's getting worse. That's better. That one. Just have to be careful with them. Because once you break them, they're a dog to get out with those uh, ferrite cores. Right, so if I just line the RF level off so that there's no signal at all, set the squelch. Which is about there where it closes. And then let's just see what RF level it comes in at to... Uh, See if we can get close up on that. Right, on the amplitude bit. Mm, 
round about uh, 0.5 of a microvolt but it's a bit uh, bit tight it's better 0.4 of a microvolt that's okay right okay uh, we'll just have a look at the spectrum analyzer as well and see what uh, how good the transmit spectral purity is See whether we can uh, uh, main main span uh, 50 megahertz. We'll have it out just for a moment, just to see what that's like. Yeah, we're doing okay. Those harmonics are well down on the left. One, two, three, four, five. Just adjust uh, the reference level as it's above the reticule scale, that's better. That's looking okay. So, what we're doing with that measurement there is we're looking to see whether there's harmonics, and uh, we'll just widen the span uh, to about 200 megahertz just for argument's sake. So this is a frequency that's been generated inside the test set. This one here is the frequency that we're transmitting on. But if there's a problem with the transmitter, we might get harmonics going off down here. They're meant to be suppressed by the uh, bandpass filter you see that's down there. If they're not working properly uh, or the coils need spreading, you might have harmonics. As you can see, when I release the microphone, that uh, fundamental carrier goes and comes and goes without any harmonic content going right the way up to two, three hundred megahertz there. So the first harmonic and the second harmonic and the third, fourth, etc. The first harmonic is normally the strongest, um, but it, it might not be depending on what the fault conditions are. But first harmonic is uh, double the frequency. So if you're transmitting on, so for example, twenty megahertz, the first harmonic will be on 40 megahertz, the third will be on uh, 60 megahertz, sorry the second harmonic will be on 60 megahertz and the third will be on 80 megahertz so on and so forth and the, the harmonics tend to start off quite large and then uh, ramp down as the uh, as, as the frequency goes up so that's just a little rundown there of what we've done with Cyanide measurements on the CB radio. Obviously I'll check it on the low frequency, channel 1, um, channel 40 as well, just to see whether or not you know, there's uh, any problems regarding the tuning of the receiver front end and the transmitter. All works on channel 1 and 40 and channel 19, so you're looking at low, mid and high of the frequency plan that it's meant to work at. So that's a little rundown, just to, just doing a basic radio measurement. Um, so as we could clearly see, the receiver was uh, not aligned correctly. Um, so we've performed that alignment now. It's on frequency on transmit. Its spectral purity is correct. The output level from the receiver is properly aligned now, so it's maximum sensitivity attainable over the frequency. Plus as well, the audio level out is um, least distorted for the maximum signal to noise and distortion or cyanide. And um, obviously we get the cyanide reading from taking the audio sample of the audio output and feeding it into the test set for the test set to analyse the cyanide distortion and signal to noise levels. So everything else looks okay. I don't think I need to do any further adjustments with this. The transmit mod's fine, the TX power's doing 5.5 watts, um, the receiver's fine, the squelch is okay, and uh, I think we can wrap this up now. I think it was just a basic uh, twiddle and fiddle. Thank you very much for watching, see you in the next video, bye.